Welcome to Saras 3D podcast. Today we have with us Mr. Kashyap Makar, a science veteran, and he's former group director at SAC ISRO. He has more than 36 years of experience of working at this prestigious organization. He is currently the vice president and general manager at Saras 3D. Saras 3D is an edtech company that intends to revolutionize the education world with its interactive stereoscopic 3D learning solutions. So let's get started with the podcast. Welcome to our show, sir. And uh, first of all, I would like to congratulate you and the entire nation for this um, um, amazing and big achievement that we have landed on the south pole of the moon. So, sir, any opening remarks on this amazing feat? Yes, uh, for this event, whole of country was waiting past last four years since the year 2019 when our Chandrayaan 2 actually did not make it. it at at the last 7 minutes yes. but but this time it was a flawless performance and everybody is happy and we are here to mm. celebrate that event so why do you think landing on moon is important for a country like india see a country actually progress is measured on its the competition on on its competence of scientific and technical manpower mm. now history has shown us that whenever there are uh, all, this, all this world war fought or whenever there is a space race for the development in space and uh, space uh, space science and technology all our scientific uh, uh, endeavors have peaked yes. now as we are aware the world uh, all these world wars are very bad uh, very very much loss of uh, all the human lives and, uh, and material so next alternative is uh, our development in science and technology through the development of the space technology yeah. i would like to quote here a quotation from dr vikram sarabhai our founding father he said that uh, there are some who question the relevance of space activities in a developing nation like ours mm. but to us there is no ambiguity of purpose we are convinced that if we are to play a meaningful role uh, in the national scene or in the community of nations we must be second to none in the application of advanced technologies in the real problems of men in the society hmm. that's very motivating um so so why did isro think of landing on the south pole of the moon what is so special about the south pole by south pole south pole is such is, is is we are aware that it is got very very less illumination from the sun right so this opens up so many possibilities one of them very important with uh, actually chandrayaan 2 could find out Hmm. is the presence of water uh, molecules in some form hmm. another is thermal and electric electrical conductivity of that area hmm. third thing is it has got so many craters it has got uh, a lumpy mass it means the gravity is different at different places hmm. all these things challenges a scientist or an engineer to to uh, go there and do some investigation in future if we want to make moon as is our colony to go further beyond moon up to mars or pluto or wherever we need to have basic thing like water yes. which is available in abundance hmm. on the south pole hence hmm. the south pole is chosen yeah. for landing so as you know sir that the landing module constitutes um, lander and the rover and they are named as vikram and pragyan respectively so what's the inspiration behind naming them as vikram and pragyan vikram is of course named after the architect of, of india's uh, space program that is uh, uh, that is dr vikram sarabhai vikram is also a sanskrit word which means a record and of course chandrayaan 3 did create a record yes. uh, by landing on the south pole of the moon yes pragyan also is a sanskrit word hmm. it means wisdom the two payload on board pragyan uh, pragyan will give us some information some knowledge some wisdom about the the composition of of the surface of the moon hmm. hence the name pragyan hmm. so both the names are very very apt hmm. right so what are the objectives of uh, vikram lander and pragyan rover what kind of observations and experiments they are going to conduct 
See, Vikram lander has got uh, basically three payloads. Hmm. One is called uh, the Chaste hmm. for the Chandra's surface thermophysical experiment hmm. to measure the thermal conductivity and temperature. Hmm. Second, uh, uh, second payload is the instrument for lunar seismic activity, ILSA, which will measure the seismic activity of the lunar, uh, lunar surface of that area. And the third one is, uh, is actually a Langomar probe to uh, estimate the plasma density in that area. There is a fourth uh, payload, which is a passive payload, kept at the last minute uh, because uh, we got a request from NASA and it is uh, nothing but a, a one type of corner passive reflector hmm. to, do the, uh, to, to do the laser ranging from Earth to Moon so that hmm. very precise distance can be measured. Hmm. So, uh, so these are the four payloads on board uh, the Vikram lander. Hmm. Now, coming to the Pragyan rover, it has got two pillars. One hmm. is the Alpha Particle X-ray X-ray Spectrometer, hmm. that is Apex, and another is the Laser Industries Breakdown Spectroscope, that is LIBS, hmm. and both are for uh, deriving elemental composition in the vicinity of the landing site. Hmm. So these two are very important thing, and it will give us uh, so much information. Us means uh, to to. Uh, all the scientists of the globe hmm. and apart from uh, this uh, this five uh, payload it has got so many cameras and other hmm. sensors of course to keep them at their place and and operate uh, operate very nicely yeah so we also read that the mission lifespan uh, of these two lander and rover is only 14 days why such a short lifespan yeah this is an interesting question see as the moon orbits the earth it also makes one complete revolution around its axis in the same time. This is a very, very unique uh, relationship. Yes. You know that Earth takes 24 hours uh, to rotate around its axis, while it takes 365 days to rotate around the sun. But here, both the things are same. So we see only one side of the moon always. Hmm. And that is for 14 days we see, and other 14 days we do not see. That is, hmm. the 14 Earth days is the daytime over moon. Hmm. And again, 14 Earth nights, equivalent to 14, uh, 14 Earth days, are, uh, are, uh, are the night period of the moon. Now, all our instruments need electricity. Yes. And, uh, and they need power. So, uh, how to get power uh, on moon? It is through sunlight. So, sunlight is available on 14 days. Hmm. But then one can ask that after, after 14 Earth days of night, we can again use it. Hmm. But what happens that at night, since there is no uh, atmosphere on moon, the temperature there drops to minus 230 degrees Celsius. Oh. So, so much cold that hmm. all the electrons may, uh, may go dead, hmm. all the mechanical joints, uh, joints will fuse uh, or wheels of the rover may not rotate and hmm. not only wheels, there are some gyroscope, there are some reaction wheels uh, in, the, in the lander also, they, hmm. they all may, may freeze, we do not know. So right now we say that its life is 14 days. Hmm. After the night of 14 days, of course, ISRO will try again to see if, whether it can be revived or not. Hmm. But as of now, we have to complete all the experiment in the 14 days given to us. Hmm. Right. Now, so if we look into the retrospect, then we know Chandrayaan 2 was a partial success. What did we learn from that? And how did the scientists of ISRO uh, make modification in Chandrayaan 3's lander module that made it into a successful landing? Yes, actually failures are the greatest uh, teachers. If mm. anything works uh, in the first time, there are all chances that it will not work a second time or third time or fourth time. Sometime it will fail yeah. because some of the system may be working on margins of its tolerances. Mm. So it can fail anytime. So it is better that we get some failure if our testing is not adequate. Okay, I can give you one example that if you remember the, the Challenger, uh, Challenger Space Shuttle, it failed on the 73rd second immediately after launch mm. in, in the year 1986. So what had happened? Mm. So our greatest scientist, uh, uh, a Finman, he could find out that one O-ring, that is one, one rubber washer, mm. was not qualified for, uh, for the cold temperature it will experience uh, when it is launched. Mm. But then a previous uh, five, fly, uh, five, fly, uh, five launches it worked. Yeah. So everybody assumed that uh, this will work uh, even the sixth time, but sixth time astronaut were, were not so much lucky. There was mm. one, even, uh, even one school teacher, mm. all, all the seven of them mm. died 
uh, on the 73rd second mm. after the launch. So mm. uh, it, it is always better that we do a uh, lot of ground testing and mm. plus if there are any failures anywhere, we learn a lot. Mm. So all these channel, uh, all these Chandra and uh, two failures were studied in details by various committees. All the recommendations they gave were mm. implemented. Not only that, so, uh, so many failure modes I were thought of that it can fail this way, it can fail this way. All were analyzed. Whatever way it could fail, we had some solution. And that's why we were, we by we miss ISRO, hmm. was immensely confident that yes, this time it will uh, hmm. uh, uh, safely. So it was Chandrayaan 2 failure hmm. which taught ISRO to do a better thing. Hmm. So though it was a partial success for Chandrayaan 2, but the orbiter of Chandrayaan 2 is still orbiting moon right so how is chandrayaan 2 orbiter going to help um, the lander module yeah see uh, chandrayaan 2 also had two parts one is the uh, one is the orbiter and another was the lander orbiter had uh, almost some five very very unique experiments hmm. and of course lander uh, lander failed to land so we can say it was uh, i think more than 50 percent success one hmm. of them and uh, it is still orbiting uh, the moon and and generating a lot of scientific data on uh, on a daily basis it is it is working actually so nicely that chandrayaan's communication system is used as a standby mm. for chandrayaan 3 lander to communicate with chandrayaan 2 and send that data to uh, to our uh, india's ground network mm. so that if there is any contingency mm. it can be handled very nicely so chandrayaan mm. 2 also is taking uh, uh, its part in this chandrayaan, uh, chandrayaan 3 mission right so, so my next question is, if we look at the timeline from launching to landing, it took more than 40 days. So why did we take such a long route? If we compare it with Russia's uh, Luna 25 moon landing mission, uh, it got into moon's orbit in just four days. So what's the reason? Why did we go long way? Yeah, actually <laughs> this question is there in, uh, I think, several minds. Basically, we have to survive and progress with the resources we have. To reach uh, moon's gravitational uh, field and, and to orbit around it, we have to go out of Earth's gravitational influence and go into moon's gravitational influence. Right. So for that, we need uh, some speed for the spacecraft. Yeah. Okay. Now, our current day rockets hmm. are not, not that much powerful hmm. to impart their speed to, to the Chandrayaan. Hmm. So now, what do we do? So we use all our Kepler's laws basically mm -hmm. that when uh, a satellite or, or a spacecraft is nearest to the earth in, in an elliptical orbit and, uh, and if we give it uh, some velocity, uh, actually its farthest point also called apogee uh, will go further uh, out from earth. Mm -hmm. so, so what happened? So every time it came uh, near to earth, we fired our onboard rockets, onboard motor uh, it is called. So that its apogee, means its farthest point, it went further and further. Hmm. When it was launched, it was it was put in 144 kilometer by uh, 44,000 kilometer elliptical orbit. Hmm. So after after five such maneuver, it reached almost moon. That is 3 lakh 84,000 kilometer. Yes. The farthest point, nearest point was still uh, 144 kilometers only. Hmm. So when it came near the moon. Hmm. What we did that moon's gravity is almost, I think, one sixth of uh, of that of Earth. Hmm. So actually, we have to reduce the speed so that it it, it is attracted by moon and not by Earth. Hmm. So at that time, we have to turn uh, the Chandrayaan hmm. in opposite direction to its velocity vector and fire the rocket so hmm. that actually speed uh, goes down hmm. and and it is captured by moon's gravity. Hmm. And then once it is captured by moon's gravity. Again by uh, again by reducing the speed, we come nearer and nearer to moon, mm. and finally we came to the 30 kilometer or 25 kilometer orbit. So basically, it was a lack of powerful rockets mm. that uh, we had to do that. If you remember, during even during our Mars orbiter mission, mm. which was there in 2012, 2000, uh, 2013, we had we didn't have this even even this powerful rocket. Mm. We had only PSLV, but mm. we went there. Hmm. in a very similar way that gradually and it took almost one year hmm. to reach Mars while others go in, in four months or five months but yeah. but we went there hmm. that is the uh, there is a beauty of, beauty of our scientists and engineers. Hmm.
So since we were talking about Russia's Luna 25 moon mission, um, you know, it was declared unsuccessful. So where did it go wrong? Why did it happen? Yes, uh, unfortunately, it, uh, it crashed on the surface of the moon. Our space community across the world feels very sad when such mishaps occur oh. because tremendous amount of efforts have gone in defining and actually executing such type of very, very complex mission. So anywhere any failure comes, we all feel sad. In an unfortunate series of events, an emergency situation developed on board Luna 25. Its onboard computers miscalculated something during the deorbit phase, that is, uh, during uh, the coming uh, coming nearer to the moon. That uh, instead of uh, the stipulated time of of some 80 seconds, uh, they all fired for 125 seconds. Oh. So the orbit of was reduced so much that it crashed on. Hmm. Uh, the moon surface. Hmm. This is the technical answer. But hmm. what what I feel is, I can attribute this to the long gap of, of nearly 50 years between hmm. their last two moon missions. Hmm. Luna 24 was launched in the year 1976 or 75 hmm. maybe. Hmm. And after this many years, hmm. after 48, 49 years only, this Luna, uh, Luna 25 was launched. Hmm. This means two generations of engineers and scientists who were in this space, uh, space science and technology field did not have any exposure to the moon landing. Yeah. There, were, uh, there was uh, no corporate memory to tell yeah. them what to do uh, in case of uh, all these contingencies. And yeah. hence, I, th I think probably this happened. Similar case happened also with NASA, yeah. that uh, they had this Apollo program. We yeah. all know that Apollo 11 uh, uh, got a man to the moon. So in Apollo program, uh, one very powerful, uh, uh, one powerful rocket called, called Saturn V was used. Hmm. And all this program that is up to Apollo 17, this Saturn V rocket was used. And Apollo 17, after Apollo 17, which was also in, in the same time period, that is 1975-76, hmm. they stopped all further moon, uh, moon landings and everybody forgot about Saturn V. Hmm. So when uh, NASA realized that they need a powerful rocket, hmm. again they had uh, no experienced persons Mm. in their staff or even, even the retired staff to tell how, how to build one. Mm. So they built an entirely fresh new one called uh, Artemis. Mm. Of course, Artemis is an excellent rocket and we have seen that uh, up to now only one test flight had happened that too after so many uh, holes and delays and uh, all other missions. So it is very essential that whatever are the space, uh, space program, it has to continue for a longer time. Nice. With all the knowledge should go from one generation to the second generation. In mm. our uh, in our previous question, we talked about Chandrayaan 2. Mm. Now suppose Chandrayaan 2, between Chandrayaan 2 and between Chandrayaan 3, if we had 10 or 15 years gap, everybody would have forgotten what yes. had happened. So it is very essential mm. that this thing happen. But uh, whenever this happens, it is very sad. I have mm. been to this mission control room during all these launches and I uh, I also have cried oh. <laughs> when it happens. But yeah. Yeah. It is very pathetic. So, how were the uh, world's space agencies like ESA and NASA involved in this Chandrayaan 3's mission? Yeah, for see, Chandrayaan 3 is an, uh, what do you call it? I can't say interplanetary, but at least it is going to our uh, our satellite moon, our, our natural satellite moon. Right. Uh, so, it is not always possible for ISRO or India to get communication link continuously and mm. communication is very very essential part of any of such, uh, mm. such missions. So we use all, uh, all the deep space network of ISA and NASA. Mm. ISA had offered, offered us three, three deep space network. Mm. One was in the French Guiana that is Kuru mm. which is their main, main launch pad also. Second was in UK and the third was uh, in uh, I think Eastern Australia. Mm. Plus, NASA also gave us as continuous support mm. uh, from their uh, their rush station, and this made it possible that even when India is not getting direct signal from Chandrayaan, at least some of uh, some of these stations are getting, and mm. our ISRO control center gets a continuous feed of data, and all mm. the decisions can be taken. So this is like a teamwork across the world, right? It is a massive teamwork. Uh, no single person can claim that I have done it. True. That is very very. very Anybody who claims or anybody uh, uh, who believes that uh, claim is uh, not not a wise person. <laughs> right. Okay. 
So we read in the news that uh, Chandrayaan 3 features a new experiment. Um, if I read it out, the, it is called spectropolarimetry of habitable planet Earth. Uh, can you shed some more light on it? Yeah, shape is as the acronym says is the, is the payload on board uh, uh, the propulsion module which is uh, orbiter of hmm. Chandrayaan 3. Hmm. And uh, what it does that uh, it is very interesting that uh, thing that it will it will it will study the polarimetric signature of Earth hmm. in in the visible and near infrared wavelengths. Hmm. So we know that Earth has got atmosphere. Yeah. Earth has got uh, habitat. Yeah. So if we get similar uh, signature from any other exoplanets, we know hmm. that that also will have possibility of some life on it. Yeah. So it is a it is a long term uh, long term study uh, project, but hmm. it is very very interesting. Yeah. Thanks. Now one last question. Yeah. Um, what is the last message that you want to give to our viewers, especially to young minds who are going to be tomorrow's innovators and scientists? Yeah, as you as you rightly said that they are the tomorrow's innovator and scientists. That is what is the purpose why the Saras 3D has started basically. Hmm. Saras 3D's aim is the student right from the school age, say 8, 9th or, uh, or, the ninth, uh, or, or even 10th uh, th uh, tenth grade of their studies, start taking interest in all the science and technology aspect. So that when they go to higher, higher secondary, that 11th and 12th, they take science as the subject. Hmm. Because unless we have got enough number of uh, science, uh, uh, science graduates, by science, I mean uh, uh, in the pure science, the engineering, the technology, uh, the medicine, anything you name it. Unless mm. we have a big pool of those, mm. we cannot progress as a nation. Mm. And hence, it is very, very necessary. So, Saras 3D aims to make the science study very, very interesting by it, uh, all these 3D interactive models. And uh, I urge all these young students to inculcate interest in science and uh, engineering and uh, and medicine or, 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 or whatever subject of your choice, use the applications like Saras 3D, which will uh, clear your concept so much that you can study very, very complex subject in half the time than which you would have taken otherwise. Hmm. So it is very important that uh, every student and every teacher uses this type of technology and makes uh, the study of science and technology very easier to understand. Hmm. In part. So that's it for today, sir. Uh, I'm sure your answers to the questions will inspire and satiate the inquisitive minds. Uh, thank you for joining us and thank you everyone for watching this. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, Anasuri. All, all the questions were very, very relevant and I really enjoyed answering them. Thank you and keep it up. Yeah.